Hello, I'm Michael Tyler, and I will be discussing patterns within blood glucose time series data. So I will first start by uh, discussing diabetes, which while we have already gone through that, um, I'm going to be focusing more on the new diabetes technology that has uh, been coming out in the past few years. I will also discuss a new method to gather information from this data, and then finally go into clinical insights and applications from this data. Diabetes is characterized by improper regulation of blood glucose due to insufficient insulin, usually caused by either destruction of the cells that produce insulin or decreased sensitivity to insulin itself. And as we've already stated, diabetes self-management is incredibly challenging even for the most dedicated individuals because of the fact that many variables affect blood glucose levels and that these, in, these variables vary between people. Now, there's thankfully been changing diabetes technology in the past few years. Uh, blood stick glucose tests uh, you used to have to prick your finger um, and take the blood from that, which gave you a discrete blood glucose level. Uh, new technology, the continuous glucose monitor, is attached to the individual, lasts three days, and gives you a data point every five minutes. Now, this is more like a time series data, which, while currently used by the individual as only real time, is like I just said, a time series data. So this is a, hopefully a new, one second. <laughs> we can hopefully find patterns within the CGM data as we can obviously find patterns within this EKG, uh, which is a heartbeat data. Um, in this case, the real data is very similar to an engineered ideal, which most cardiologists would know as the PQRST. Um, we're looking to identify similar functional vocabulary in CGM data, which is very regular. Uh, so as you can see in the top left, this is over several thousand hours of CGM data, as well as the responder, uh, the tran not the transceiver, the receiver for the blood glucose. Um, let's see. This is the receiver. The raw data is taken in to the algorithm which is then chopped up into windows of 35 minutes, then sent into an industry standard k-means, which returns back a set of motifs. Um, these motifs are only similar to some of the data uh, from the original data set. So we remove the data that is similar to it as measured by the, excuse me, hmm as measured by the similarity cutoff, and then sent back through to k-means. This is done until there is no more data left, at which point all of the motifs from k-means are collected together and sent out as the set of motifs for uh, individuals with diabetes. Now, we, in this case, have our first set of glucomotifs. These are each 35 minutes of continuous glucose monitor data, and they capture almost all the blood glucose variability while respecting the need for simplifi simplifying the data. Uh, these more extreme events, as uh, shown by the de sharp decreases or sharp increases, are more important to the diabetes patients and clinicians, but, excuse me, several, still several of these motifs capture the healthy blood glucose levels measured in green. So as a check to make sure that the motifs 
reflect reality, we, <laughs> we collected the data as seen in the red dots uh, over time and matched these each to a motif, uh, making this into a reconstruction of the original raw data. While measuring this, there was only a 90, there was a 95% level of accuracy, and we expect the 5% level of inaccuracy to be caused by extreme rates of change. In future work, we plan to improve forecasting using more data. As previously stated in Stephanie's talk, we have a data set with CGM data, heart rate monitor, activity monitor, insulin usage, and sleep level data. And we hope to gather all of this information together in order to create a more informed predictive scheme. And secondly, my, this algorithm can be used on other data sets. It works on general data sets because the algorithm is not specific to diabetes. In summary, this algorithm condenses the original data into a sequence of motifs, which allows new analyses for an individual or a clinician. And finally, the algorithm can be used on different time series data sets, not just on diabetic data. I would like to acknowledge Dr. Knight Heinzman, Dr. Georgie O'Quare, the Dimitri study participants, CalIT2, IDASH, the, the Division of Biomedical Informatics, and finally, the National Institute of Health. Any questions? <laughs>